Week 7. Day 1. Six full weeks on the road, living in a van, no electricity, bucket showers every three days, and the only entertainment, besides our own minds, is radio in the dark of night. For the last week, we've been following the most difficult part of Lewis and Clark's trail, the part that should have killed them. What takes us hours took them many hard days traveling up and down these rugged passes. In light of where we are, both physically and culturally, we've been pondering the concept of turning around bad ideas. Back at the Turnaround River, Jacob came up with a new character, Star Woman. Star, Star, Star Woman, Woman turn, around, turn around, holy, holy water. water! Each stop along the path has brought us another layer of revelation about the stories that need to be told. We tell each other, we're living beside the road, but between the worlds. Week 7. Day 2. We're heading off the big pass called Lolo Pass, and we found a beautiful stand of old cedar trees. We call this place the Eastern Gate of Cedar Nation. In order to be within walking distance of the ancients, we pulled into an old gravel loading pit. Not exotic, but it's flat. I gather hypericum, which is good for depression. I take adorable pictures of Kit. I have a revelation about Star Woman, who she is and why we can call upon her, and then we get ready to go, off the mountain and down to the next thing. The battery won't start. I know exactly what it is. For the last few days I've had two or three direct feelings or thoughts to check the water in the battery. I didn't do it. So when the car didn't start, I checked, and the receptors were bone dry. Oops. At about the same moment that I was checking the battery, Jacob said, We need to do ritual here. I was getting the feeling, but I was too lazy. He immediately went to the nearest cedar tree and cut off a frond to dispel with. Jacob continues to awe me. He proceeded to get in the van and take out his solar panel and his second car battery, and then he began the process of recharging our deep cycle battery while we proceeded to do ritual to turn this situation around. You see, Lewis and Clark are archetypes in addition to men. Their model and method is still invoked today. It embodies the attitude and the process for colonizing this entire earth, and it must stop. Jacob drew a circle in the gravel and then drummed while I honored the four directions and asked for Star Woman to help in turning this around. Okay, car, let's go. We tried it again. Not enough juice yet. Hmm, what have we not done? I sat quietly and pondered this question. Star Woman came to mind. I began to feel a story coming on. Her story. For the next hour or so, I scribbled this story down. And now I tell it to you as Star Woman gave it to me. Upon finishing, the van starts, and we continue down the mountain, humbled and grateful. Thank you, Star Woman. The Secret of Star Woman A long time ago, a family of star people came to visit Earth. The Star Father had heard that the newly discovered Earth offered many opportunities for success, and being an enterprising star man with a family to feed, he loaded his kin into their space traveler RV to seek his fortune. Star Mother was reluctant to leave her home, but she knew her mate wanted this opportunity, so she agreed. We are going to make a new home on Earth, she told her star son and star daughter. Star son was excited for the adventure. Star daughter was not, for she was at the age that all girls go through, no matter where they are from. She didn't want to leave her friends, let alone go to a wild and dirty place like Earth. I've heard stories, she pleaded with her father. There are monsters called animals there that will eat you. And it's cold and hot. It sounds horrible. We are going, Starfather decreed, and that was the end of it. Not long after, Star family arrived at Earth. Starfather stepped out of the RV first to take a look at their new home. 
star daughter, feeling horrified about the whole disaster, reluctantly stepped onto Earth for the first time. A rush of energy entered through her feet like she had never felt before. Do you feel that? she gasped out loud. Feel what, dear? star mother asked. She doesn't feel anything, star father snapped. Let's get to work. As Star Family set to their task of settling in, Star Father began assessing, mapping, and taking samples of everything around them. We need to see what is worth star credits to send back home, he told his watching Star Son, who quickly began to help. Star Daughter, however, became engrossed with the world around her. She was not taking samples like her father, yet she was sampling everything. The life around her was abundant. She had never seen, smelled, heard, or tasted so many beautiful things, ever. She had heard from her father's friends that Earth had many different types of land mountains, deserts, plains, forests, and then there was water. Natural water had long disappeared on Star Daughter's home planet, and she had heard stories of Earth's abundant water. But she was not prepared for the sensations of sitting near it. Standing in it and drinking it. The first time she touched the water to her lips, she cried. Luckily, she was out of sight from her family. Soon, wild creatures began to show themselves to Star Daughter. The first encounter made her squeal and run back to the RV, but soon her curiosity overcame her fear. She realized that if she were quiet, she could see more. And more. At the RV, her entire star family seemed to be engrossed with packaging up samples to take back for analyzation, her father said. I'm sure some of these metals, rocks, probably even the water, can be the base of our new business, he said proudly. She didn't understand his talk, so she focused more and more on the whisper she was beginning to hear when she was away from them. She heard a sound. Looked up, and there was a flying creature. Welcome. You look friendly, she heard in her head. The voice seemed friendly, so it didn't scare her. Soon she saw another creature and heard, My name is Deer. So she called it Deer. The water welcomed her as well. The tall ones are called trees, water told her on the wind. So she said hello to her new friends. That night, while sleeping, she had a dream, something she nor her family had ever had before. She was walking near the water, and she saw a mist begin to rise off the land, and then she heard a woman's voice, but not her mother's, speak to her sleeping mind. Daughter, this is a dream. You are to be a woman soon, and you will need to make an important decision. Your new friends have welcomed you. But soon they will come to need you. We are glad you are home. We will miss you if you leave. I'm not leaving. We live here now, Star Daughter said to the woman in the dream. But then the voice was gone, and she woke up, back in the RV with her family. The next morning, Star Daughter was very thoughtful. She did not know what to make of her nighttime experience, and she was reluctant to tell her parents. They had been getting irritated with her for not wanting to help with the samples. Don't be lazy or ungrateful, they all teased her. While she was looking at the trees, thinking about her strange dream, we will miss you if you leave. Her father yelled, I found it! We are rich! Everyone gathered around. I have heard about this material. Everyone is paying many credits for it, and I think there is a lot of it here. We must load these samples and go back immediately. If this is what I think it is, we are rich. Star Mother and Star Son excitedly began packing. Star Daughter began to cry. I don't want to go back. I thought we live here now. Oh, girl, quit crying, her mother snapped. Our lives will be so much better. We can go back home and send workers here to extract this, uh, this, what's it called, dear? she asked her mate. Gold, he said with a smile. Yes, gold, Star Mother said. Now we can hire workers to do this dirty work. Don't you miss the comforts of home and your friends? Star Mother asked her daughter. I have new friends, Star Daughter said quietly. 
trees and deer and the woman in my dreams. Dream? What in the world are you talking about? Enough. Go pack, she ordered her daughter angrily. Stardaughter knew her people and knew they would not change their minds. So instead of packing, Stardaughter ran to the water and cried. She called to her dream friend to help. What do I do? she called. She again heard the voice in her head. Your family's tactics will destroy us. The water, the land, and the animals will be poisoned. You must make a choice. You are a woman now. What do you choose? Stardaughter wandered along the water, thinking deeply. That night, while her star family was sleeping to return home in the morning, Stardaughter, now Star Woman, quietly snuck out, leaving a note to explain. Father, mother, and brother, thank you for bringing me here. I have learned much. Due to the teachings I have received, I am now a woman and am able to choose my own destiny. I choose to walk away from your choices because I cannot assist in the destruction of my new friends on earth. I am sure you do not understand, but do not look for me. I am okay, and I am gone. I love you. Star Woman is still among us. Of the same family that has extracted and poisoned so much, she can be called upon to help turn it around. Star Woman's teachers taught her. Forever you can help the people and the creatures of Earth turn around the greedy in fantastical ways. Your presence can help strengthen and focus the prayers for the health, balance, and beauty, just like you remember it. Your power grows as more call upon you.